mark will open. Now on to the coasters with confirmed layouts and that sort of thing. Since we know what these rides will be like for this part of the video, I'll rank them all from worst to best. Okay, that was a lie. There's 22 of these that I found, and some of them aren't too good, so I'll just go over the first seven and then rank the top 15. Here we go. Mirabilandia is getting two new for 2023 coasters, but this isn't the Mirabilandia you're thinking about. I'm not talking about the one in Italy, instead I mean the Mirabilandia in Brazil. This park is actually being rebuilt about 15 kilometers away from its original location, and will be opening two new coasters with the park in 2023. One of these is a relocated Intamin 8 Inversion coaster, which originally came from the defunct Terra Encantada Park and was called Monte Macaya. This coaster will feature eight inversions, obviously, and be similar to something like Colossus at Thorpe Park. Mirabilandia is also opening another coaster, but I'll get to that later. Next is Lightning, a launch coaster from Vacoma going to Furevik, a Swedish park. It'll be a family coaster with a max speed of 48 miles per hour and navigate its 1,400 foot long layout twice, making the launch a boost on the second time around. This looks like a great fit for this family park and gives them their third new coaster in six years. Another Swedish family coaster is Luna going to Liseberg. This will be a Vacoma family boomerang, the tallest and fastest one yet, with a max height of over 100 feet tall. Liseberg is a wonderful park and this coaster will only strengthen their lineup. Arctic Rescue was announced just a few weeks ago. It's an Intamin family launch coaster going to SeaWorld San Diego. We've known that this project was in the works for a while now. However, it seems odd that this park is getting Arctic Rescue when they already have a family launch coaster with Manta. Whatever the reason might be, this park is geared more towards families overall, so I have no doubts this ride will be a hit among SeaWorld San Diego's target audience. Dark Coaster is another family launch coaster, also from Intamin, and going to a SeaWorld-owned park, this time with Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This will be a multi-launch coaster going around the indoor course two times, making for four launches total. It's another launch coaster for BGW, but a welcome indoor coaster and a good replacement for the Curse of Dark Castle. Legoland Deutschland will be opening a family wing coaster next year as part of a new themed area, Mythica. This coaster will be around 50 feet tall and official height hasn't been released yet, but it'll reach 33 miles per hour along just under 1500 feet of track. The interesting thing about this coaster is that even though it's a family coaster, it will feature an inversion, a zero-g roll. It's definitely a weird concept and will be an interesting ride in Legoland's collection. By now, everyone's heard of Cedar Point's new for 2023 Wild Mouse. I'm not going to go too in-depth with it since there's tons of videos out there on it. My stance on this and the whole boardwalk section of the park is that it's definitely a good addition to a park like Cedar Point. While I and many other enthusiasts would have loved to see a more thrilling ride, I think it's nice that many parks out there are trying to focus on a better overall park experience instead of just adding coaster after coaster every year. So now it's time to rank the top 15 confirmed new for 2023 coasters. This is just my opinion on how good I think these rides are going to be. Obviously nobody's ridden these yet. So yeah, there's not much more I have to say. Let's get into it. At number 15 is Big Bear Mountain. This Vacoma multi-launch family coaster will be going to dead. Next is Aquaman Power Wave, a Mach power ride this will be most similar to. However, there are some really unique parts of Zambezi Zinger that are much different from other coasters out there. First off, it'll feature a spiral lift hill paying homage to the old defunct Schwarzkopf at the same park with the same name. This ride will also have GCI's new Titan track on parts of the layout. It'll only be on the spiral lift and one turn, but this shows that GCI might start to transition to hybrid track. Finally, Zambezi Zinger is the first coaster to use GCI's new Infinity Flyer trains. Not much has been released about these new trains, but they, as well as the rest of the ride, look very interesting. Next at number 11 is Mad Racers. This is coming to Fantasy Valley and is a GCI Woody acclaim. Taking the number 9 spot is Tron Light Cycle Run going to Magic Kingdom. Tron will be a clone of the ride with the same name at Disney Shanghai. It's a Vacoma motorbike coaster with some really immersive theming. The coaster will reach 59 miles per hour, making it the fastest coaster at Disney World Resort in Florida, and even though it might not pull a ton of forces, Tron's sure to be a solid ride. Next at number 8 is the Vacoma Hyperspace Warp going to Fantawild Yu Zhao. This is yet another clone, this time of many coasters at Fantawild Parks all over China. The Hyperspace Warp is a new-gen Vacoma model with smooth transitions, airtime, and three inversions, and looks to be essentially a smaller version of Lek Coaster or Phoenix. Coming in at number 7 is Palindrome at Kota Land. This is a very unique concept, a shuttle Gerslauer Infinity Coaster with a zero-g stall, wave turn, and twisted drop. You'll cross over a road on this ride and navigate all of its elements both forwards and backwards, hence the name. This looks to be a great addition to a growing park that has another ride on this list that I'll get to in a bit. At number 6 is Matugani. 
This is another relocation, this time of the old Intamin Accelerator Coaster Kanunen and going to Lost Island Theme Park, which opened just last year. Matugani will be the smallest accelerator, but will still pack a lot into its layout, including a top hat vertical loop, some airtime hills and intense turns, and an inline twist. Moving into the top five, we have Storm the Dragon Legend going to Tussenfried. This is a Gerslauer shuttle swing launch inverted coaster, that's a mouthful, reaching 62 miles per hour and featuring three inversions. This is the ride I think has gone under the radar for people most. While it might be short, Storm packs a lot into its layout and looks like a super interesting concept. I'm a bit skeptical if Gerslauer is going to be able to build a quality invert and make it smooth, but from the layout it looks like a really solid ride and makes Tussenfried the park more people should be aware of. At number 4 is another cloned Chinese Vacoma, a Top Gun launch coaster going to another park under construction, Phanto Ald Jining. The Top Gun model is a unique launch coaster from Vacoma with its new gen signature elements, inversions, airtime, you know the deal by now. Two things that I think stand out are this first element, a rollover camelback that looks like it gives some really good forces in all directions, and the short length of the trains. There's only eight people per train, which could prove to be a problem capacity-wise if this model were to be added to larger parks. Nevertheless, this looks like one of Vacoma's best models to date, and I'd love for it to be added to more parks. Coming in at number three is another Vacoma circuit breaker going to Kota Land. This is a tilt coaster just like Energy Land is new edition. This layout, however, has been confirmed and looks to have some really cool maneuvers. It's got that rollover camelback I just mentioned with the Top Gun launch coaster, as well as some other inversions like a downward spiring zero G roll, a stall loop, and a heartline roll just before the brakes. This ride isn't just based on the tilt track, it's got a fantastic layout to go with it, and that's why I think it'll be such a great ride. At the number two spot is Airy Force One. This is an RMC hybrid going to Fun Spot Atlanta and was originally planned to open last year, but it got delayed. It's got a fantastic layout designed by Joe Draves with some great inversions, airtime moments, and all around just looks to be an amazing ride and middle to top tier RMC. Sure, the name is stupid as all hell, but that doesn't detract from the fact that this should be the best new coaster in Georgia. But it's not quite as good as the number one coaster in my opinion, Tutatis, going to Park Asterix. This has been in the works since 2018 when it was announced at IAPA along with Conda, and this ride looks to have one of the best layouts in the world. It's an Intamin Blitz coaster with a swing launch, much like Pantheon, but the layout looks much better in my opinion. It's got lots of airtime, whippy elements, intense moments, and if this thing delivers in terms of forces, it could be a top 10 coaster in the world. So that's the list. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and maybe learned a bit about the coasters that nobody knows about. Thanks for watching and stay that nobody knows about. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. that nobody knows about. Thanks for watching and stay
No. Mm -hmm.